So what is adjusted R square? How does it work? And how do we use it to analyze our models? Let's find out. R square and adjusted R square. Recall that as feature variables are added to a model, R square can either stay the same or increase, never decrease. All chance variation around R square is only in the positive direction. This leads to an inflation in the amount of true variance explained in the target variable, especially at low sample sizes. To account for this variance inflation, there are many ways to adjust or penalize models that have more than one feature variable. A common method is the aptly named adjusted R square. Almost all software, including Excel, of course, in the data analysis tool pack, outputs adjusted R square. The adjusted R square penalty. The adjustment is not solely based on the number of feature variables in the model. The penalty is best understood as the balance between the number of feature variables and the number of observations. The most severe adjustment will be made on models that have many feature variables relative to the number of observations. In fact, adjusted R square can actually become negative if there are many features but few observations. And in that case, if adjusted R square is negative, we just set it equal to zero. In statistical terms, adding a feature is a loss of one degree of freedom, and that loss carries a cost. Unfortunately, adjusted R square has many formulas. If you look online or in textbooks, you might see the one here at the top. You might see this one here in the middle. You might see this one on the bottom, or you might see one that's different entirely. The important thing to point out here is that they all achieve the same result. Actually, if you reorganize them algebraically, you can actually end up with the same formula. It doesn't really matter which one you use, as long as you have all the things you need to calculate it. Now, R square in these formulas is the R square of the model we're looking at. So if you remember in the previous screen, we had our three variables, so the R square was there at the top. N is the number of observations. So in this case, it's 100. N minus P, the P is the number of variables in the model, which in this case is three. So that's all you need there. However, the one in the middle has SST and MSE, and we'll show those here in a second. So here's the output again. You can see that we have SSE, we have DFE, RMSC, that's root mean square error. So if you square root mean square error, that will give you mean square error, which is the MSC over here on the left. Then we have the R square and the R square adjusted. So this DFE, which is degrees of freedom for the error term, is very important. So remember that DFE is N minus P minus one. Well, where do we see that in these formulas? We see it everywhere. So here we have 100, that's number of observations, minus three, number of variables, minus one. So in this case, DFE is 96. See it there? See it there. Now it's also embedded in the MSE because the MSE is just SSE divided by DFE. So if we were to take 147815 divided by 96, that would give us our MSE. Now remember, we could also square the RMSE, the root mean square error, that will give us the same thing. So here's our output, and here's a formula. Let's go ahead and calculate the adjusted R square. So remember that the P here is the number of feature variables we have in our model. In this case, it is three. And then the R square is the 0 0.7326 up there at the top. Now we just substitute. So now we have one minus the quantity, one minus 0 0.7326, that's our R squared at the top. N minus one is 100 minus one, because we have 100 observations. The denominator is 100 minus three minus one. We know where those numbers come from. Go ahead and keep doing the math out, and we end up with an R squared adjusted, or adjusted R squared, you can call it whatever you want, is 0 0.7242, which matches what we have here in our output. So there is a walkthrough of how it's calculated using the formula over here on the left. Now let's do it a different way. Let's use this formula, the one we saw in the middle on the formula slide. So here we need the SST and the MSE. So the SST is the total sum of squares. Now remember, the SST and the SSE are the same when no feature variables are in the model. 
So in this top output screen here, we can see that we have no feature variables in the model at all. So at that stage, SST and SSE are the same. It's a flat horizontal line across a graph at the mean of the dependent variable, which in this case is the estimate there in the intercept. And that's the mean price of the houses in our data, which is $207,300. Now we need the MSE of the model we're looking at. So here's the output for our three variable model, and we need the MSE. So what we do is just take the root mean square error and square it. So that'll be 39.24 approximately, and we square it to get our MSE. Substitute those numbers in, and we have one minus the quantity of 100 minus one, divided by 552777, that's our SST in the top left, multiplied by 39.239, that is our root mean square error here on the bottom, squared to get our MSE. Go ahead and do that, and we get the same thing, 0 0.7242. Now these next couple of slides are gonna be hypothetical. So these are not real numbers for the most part, I wanna show you what happens when you change one thing at a time in the adjusted R square formula. Realize that this is hypothetical and just stay with me. So here is one of our formulas for adjusted R square. We'll use this one because it has all the parts visible um, readily in it. So let's say we have a model and this is what we've been doing before. We have three feature variables, so P equals three, 100 observations, N equals 100, and an R square of 0 0.7326. This is actually what we just did. So we go ahead and go through the math, do our subtraction. So the 0 0.2674 is just one minus 0 0.7326. That's where that comes from. 99 is N minus one divided by 96, which is N minus P minus one. Go ahead and keep doing the math out and we get the same adjusted R square we had before of 0 0.7242. Now, hypothetically speaking, let's increase our number of feature variables from three to 19. This is hypothetical. We increase the number of feature variables from three to 19, that's P in our formulas here. When we do that, we expect our R square to increase because remember, we're adding 16 more feature variables. Remember that the R square will increase, but it's gonna increase at a diminishing rate a quickly diminishing rate in most cases. So even though we're adding 16 more feature variables here, hypothetically, we're gonna say that our R square went from 0 0.7326 to 0 0.7651. So an increase of about 3% or 0 0.03 approximately. So that's our hypothetical situation. Now let's do this again. So we do the math out. Notice that there's a bit of a change here on the right-hand side, we keep going. And in this case, we end up with an adjusted R square of 0 0.7093. Now, we added 16 more variables here. Now look at our original R square. 0 0.7326 for three feature variables, 0 0.7651 for 19 feature variables. However, when we make the adjustment on the left-hand side, we only went down about 1%, less than 1% in our overall variation explained. Over here on the right, we went down like 0 0.06, a little bit less than 0 0.06, 0 0.05. So a big difference, a big change in the R squared to the adjusted R squared. And you can see all we did there was change the number of feature variables from three to 19. And if you look at this fraction over here, this is where things are happening. So over on the left-hand side, we have 99 divided by 96. Well, that's close to one. There isn't a whole lot going on in that fraction when we multiply the 0.2674. However, over here on the right, we have 99 divided by 80. Well, that's about, what, 1.24? So that's a huge increase in that number over there. So we multiply that fraction by the 0.2349, then subtract that from one. That's why we take a big chunk out of one down here in the lower right. So that fraction over there is where everything is happening. And remember at the beginning what I said, that adjusted R square is a combination that we take into account the number of observations and the number of feature variables we have. 
Well, if you look at the fraction at the top, you can see that's what everything is in that fraction. Now let's do this again, but change the number of observations. So we have three feature variables, 50 observations this time. So we're having the number of observations. The R square is the same, 0 0.7326. Remember, this is hypothetical. Do the math, and we end up with an adjusted R square of 0 0.7152. We went from 0 0.7326 to 0 0.7152. That is a bigger decrease from before, but it's nothing overly drastic. Now let's do 19 feature variables, 50 observations, and the same R square from the previous slide. So we're gonna assume the same increase in R square when we added 16 more variables. Algebraically, we do the math, and we come up with an adjusted R square of 0 0.6163. Wow, look at how the penalty crushed that adjusted R square down to 0.6163 from 0 0.7651. That's a change of 0.15 approximately. Over here on the left, we had a change of approximately, you know, 0.2, or actually 0.15 approximately. So the change on the left-hand side was not as dramatic because we have three feature variables relative to 50 observations. On the right, we have 19 feature variables relative to 50 observations. Can you see the penalty here? This is how R square adjusted or adjusted R square works. And you can see on the right that this fraction is huge now. So 49 divided by 30 is like 1.63 repeating, I think. That's a huge number over there on the right. Over here on the left, it's close to one again. So 49 divided by 46, it's higher than before, but it's a lot closer to one than 49 divided by 30. And that's where that penalty comes in because we have 50 observations and 19 feature variables. So it makes that fraction very large relative to the one on the left. All right, so the degradation of adjusted R square relative to N and P. Again, remember this is hypothetical. So here is the first case. P equals three, N is 100, R square is 0.7326. The adjusted R square was 0.7242, so not that big a change. Then we increased the number of feature variables to 19. We upped the R square a bit to account for those additional variables to 0.7651. The adjusted R square is 0 0.7093. So you can see the change there. On the top, we had a small change. Down below, we had quite a bit larger change. Now, let's do the other two. So here we have three feature variables, 50 observations. The R square again is 0 0.7326. And the adjusted R square in this case is 0 0.7152. So you can see at the top, when we had 100 observations, the R squared to adjusted R squared change was less than 0 0.01. Down below, when we have 50 observations, the change was a lot larger, 0 0.0175 approximately, so a much bigger change. Now the last example, 19 feature variables, 50 observations, R squared of 0 0.7651, and the adjusted R squared there was 0 0.6163, a huge change downward. So we can look at this one of two ways. In the first way, we can compare what happens when we change nothing but basically the number of feature variables. We did adjust for an R square increase because of those additional variables, but we kept that the same between the two. So in the first case, from three to 19 feature variables, when we had 100 observations, the R square change was not that large, relatively speaking. But down below, when we had three feature variables and then 19 feature variables, but we had 50 observations, everything else remaining the same, the adjusted R square went from 0 0.7152 all the way down to 0 0.6163. Now remember what I said at the very beginning, the adjusted R square really hammers models, especially hard, that have few observations relative to the number of feature variables. So the increase from three to 19 feature variables hit the 50 observation models much, much harder than it did the model that had 100 observations. And that's the thing I really want you to understand in this video is that adjusted R square penalizes models that have high numbers of features relative to the number of observations. We could also slice this another way. 
we can look at the models that have the same number of features. So at the top we have P equals three, and the third one is also P equals three, 150 observations respectively, the same R square. So the top one is 0 0.7242, the third one down below is 0 0.7152. Not much of a difference there, right? Now, look at the other one. We have 19 feature variables, 100 observations, 19 feature variables, 50 observations, and we went from 0 0.7093 to 0 0.6163. So you see the effect of the number of feature variables relative to the number of observations? It is a huge difference. So the moral of the story, this is part of the reason we always strive to keep models as simple as possible. This is especially true when the number of observations is relatively small. Losing degrees of freedom, in this case adding features, is costly because it affects our mean square error. If adding a feature variable does not reduce SSE, then SSE divided by DFE with lower degrees of freedom could make our MSE increase. So what we're saying here is that when we add a feature variable, we better get a significant reduction in SSE. Otherwise, the cost is just too high. All right, so that wraps up this video. Thank you for watching. You can follow me here on YouTube, of course, and on LinkedIn. If this is your first time here, thank you for coming. If you're a returning viewer, I'm glad to have you back. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with classmates, colleagues, or friends, or anyone else you think might benefit from watching. Take care and bye-bye.